Welcome, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Today I wanted to talk about smart tips, tricks, and ideas for your plant-based kitchen. So I want to thank you for joining me today. In fact, that reminds me, you know, if you have any tips or tricks or ideas or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And so, so anyhow, I just want to start with number one kitchen uh, tip here is, uh, you know, we use a lot of these mason drawers a lot uh, for canning and for storage. And, uh, you know, these, when we do canning, like we make our own homemade, uh, tomato sauce from our organic vegetable garden, but you know these ball lids that many of us are familiar with, they come with these two-piece lids. I mean, they're, they're nice for canning and I guess you could still use them for storing some of your, well like in here we have the flaxseed and the uh, nutrition cheese. And you could still use these, but for me, uh, in our plant smart kitchen, I have found these uh, plastic lids to be really, really helpful. They're one piece, they're easy to screw on and so we just love storing our our different uh, foods in here. So yeah, we, we use the, the, a lot of the flaxseed. My wife and I make oatmeal. That's uh, something we have most days of the week and uh, we add two tablespoons of oatmeal, uh, this uh, flaxseed in our oatmeal and then we add some berries in our oatmeal. And so, but so yeah, we love these, uh, these containers. They keep things nice and dry, keep the bugs uh, from going in the containers and uh, and they also have these in, uh, this is one quart size. They have them in 16 ounces and they also, I think, have them in 12 ounce jars. And so I would encourage you to think about maybe getting these, buying some of these uh, lids. They're just very helpful. And then here's our nutrition yeast that we get from Whole Foods. My wife and I go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods maybe like every two weeks we do our shopping there to get most of our stuff. In fact, if you know, we've, we've done some of the grocery hauls in the past, I would encourage you to maybe, maybe watch. And so, uh, anyhow, another, uh, another tip here is, uh, you know, we all love our cilantro and our plant-based meals and our parsley. And uh, the cilantro here in our house is one of our favorites. And so, you know, we just love it for our Mexican dishes and, and a variety of other dishes that we use. And so, one, one tip I learned is that when you, when you get your cilantro from the grocery store, you take it home and, and take off the metal twist tie and fill a glass with some water and then just put the cilantro in the water in your refrigerator and you'll find it'll, it'll stay fresher for longer. And so this was a nice easy kitchen tip that I learned years ago. In fact, that reminds me, uh, you know, this has been, this is my now three year plan anniversary that I celebrate my plant-based lifestyle, but before that I used to watch the Food Network, all those different shows on Chopped and uh, Bobby's Filet's Throwdown, I think I've watched that. And so, I, you know, along the, those years I did learn some uh, tips and tricks that I'm always trying to, to learn, you know, just like being in the trades for 40 years as a contractor. I'm always trying to learn, you know, and, and share experiences. And so, you know, this just thought we would do this video to share some some tips or tricks and like I said if you have any feel free to share them below and so so anyhow another another thing that I, we do here is a uh, liquid amino the Bragg's liquid amino it's around eight dollars for a 32 ounce bottle here and it's fairly concentrated and so and what we do here is we we take one bottle then I take a spare bottle and then fill halfway with both bottles with halfway with liquid amino and then I fill the rest with water here and so you get two bottles for the price of one and uh, I think we did it we, we've on some of the other videos that we've done I have touched base on some of these different tips or tricks in the in the kitchen and so again this is a, this has just been a favorite flavor food flavoring of mine uh, to add to my rice or potatoes and you can even use some of this liquid amino just as a 
a, a light dressing on your greens. You know, you could sprinkle some on. It's really a, a good uh, salad dressing. And uh, even with it watered down like that, it, you still have a lot of good flavor on it. But you're basically getting two bottles for the price of one. And so we're always into teaching people how to save money and repurpose things around their house, whether it's in the garden or in the kitchen and, and so on. Uh, another favorite of, of ours with the... Uh, for your starches is uh, sweet chili sauce and so we get this one particular one from Trader Joe's and so what I basically do is you know there's probably like one third of the bottle left again it's a very concentrated liquid and so what you can do is you know I just I'll just add a little bit of water to it and then shake it up and it'll still give you plenty of flavoring on your rice or your potatoes. You know, one of the foods we love in our house, and my Howie, my cameraman, we, we love the potatoes, red New Orleans potatoes with, um, with Swiss chard on top from our kit, or from our garden. And so that's one of our favorite plant smart meals here at our house. And so, and then we dress that up with a little bit of sweet chili sauce. And so, uh, that's our, this is one of our favorite flavorings in the house here. And I would encourage you to think about maybe getting some of that if you don't have any. So anyhow, we're, uh, we're on to the potato. Now, I have seen people in the past, uh, you know, they just slice their potatoes, maybe half inch slices. But what I've discovered is I try to slice my potato in wedges. And that way, as they're being baked in the oven, they'll sit basically like on their back, like if you're at the, at the beach on a lounge chair, you're, your, your back's against the sand and your face is upward where you get more heat and you know you get kind of sunburned and crisp you could say and it's kind of the same idea with a potato wedge so you know for what I do is you basically get one potato and you cut it in half and then you can get another potato you know you get them and cut them again lengthwise and then you can you can then just take that wedge and so you just you just simply cut them in wedges it's really not that difficult to do. So you see how they're all the the ends are exposed. And you just keep on simply cutting cutting them in wedges. That way the air will also circulate circulate around them much better. And so you can just line them all up like army soldiers, you know, right up against each other. And the air will circulate and the heat, again, there'll be more edges exposed to the oven heat. I think it resulting in a much crispier, uh, well done uh, baked fry. And so that's just another kitchen trick that I have, or way that I've always uh, cut my potatoes. And it's really no harder cutting them this way than the other way, but I think the end result you'll be much happier if you cut them that way. So, so you can see right there that they're See how they're all exposed to the heat from the oven. And even if you put them up on the broiler, then they'll just boil all that. There's a lot more surface area exposed. And again, the air will, the heat will circulate around them. So let me put them over here. Okay, so we're on to another trick here. Now, many of us uh, that follow this plant-based lifestyle might be familiar with the Ezekiel brand uh, bread or they also have their tortillas here and we love these these are oil free we make a lot of wraps here my wife and I love making wraps with rice and bean that's probably one of our favorite meals no matter how many times you eat them per week they always seem to be really taste good the next day and so but when you buy these one thing I don't know if you've experienced but I experience them every time that the center always sticks to each other now these two, of course, are peeling right away because I already did my little trick here. But, you know, as you get down to the pile, you know, they're always sticking together. Sometimes they'll start to tear them. So, so simply what I do is I have a long metal spatula here. And you simply just take it and you can push that spatula right up between the two. And that'll free your tortillas up to be used rather than and tear them. Now if you don't have a long handled sp spatula, you probably could take like a, a long skinny knife like, like that and 
I bring them over to the edge of the table and then just get your knife and and then just slowly I actually work the back of my knife right across just enough to it's kind of like if you're flaying a fish you just separate the two surfaces so that way when you open these up you're not tearing them all apart you can actually take the whole pile out and separate them all at one time and then put them all back in the container that way when you go to use them you don't have to do this each time with with each layer and so uh, that to me has just been a nice little uh, way to separate your your shells okay so the last one we have here many of you might be familiar with the instapot and so one thing you always want to do is you know make sure your your seals are well cleaned here on your lid go over that with a the rag you know check your seals on the upper of your lid and uh, and then down in the down in the instapot here you have a trough here and so you can just simply you know if, if it gets pretty bad you can either put a spray cleaner in there but uh, I just take this little this actually was my in our drawer here this was my grandson's little bib here but any towel will do you know you just basically wet the corner and you can just get a spoon or a knife or the end of a fork and just basically roll it up and work it around the edge just to clean that that trough in here that you want the, that to be nice and clean and just basically work it around the, the edge here to, to in the groove to keep it nice to get it nice and clean and that way if you use a towel of some sort you could even try using a paper towel roll roll the paper towel up and just stick it in the groove but you want to keep an eye on that so it doesn't you know have any food build up you know that way you'll have a nice clean seal uh, by keeping this trough for this groove down here nice and clean and so uh, so anyhow uh, I think this pretty much wraps it up for kitchen tips and tricks for your plant smart kitchen so if you have any again any ideas or uh, thoughts or comments please leave them in the section below if you have any tips or ideas that you'd like to share so so anyhow I just want to thank you for joining me today until next time this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred